Afghanistan, then I have some questions. So about Ukraine, how it overshadow Afghanistan issues. Um, so about the Taliban, um, I'm sure you're following how it is going on with Afghanistan and all the things the Taliban continue their abuses. Um, are the Taliban closer to recognition as a government in Afghanistan? So do you think some countries really might consider recognizing the Taliban as official or legitimate government of Afghanistan? I have every reason to expect that a number of capitals in the region and beyond are considering just that question. No one has taken that step so far, and it would be a great mistake, I think, for any country to do so. Uh, that uh, the United States, I think, would be forced to take action uh, against uh, a country that recognized the Taliban government through sanctions. And we have seen uh, how, how much pain those sanctions can extract. So uh, as badly as the Biden administration bungled the Afghan issue, I, I do think they understand they cannot just let it go. Uh, that uh, any effort to establish diplomatic relations will be met by us with uh, uh, whatever uh, power of sanctions we can uh, we can muster both uh, bilaterally and internationally. Uh, Taliban also like they're pushing so to get control of some of the embassies, uh, especially the neighboring countries. Um, what does it mean to them if they go to the embassy if they are not really recognized by the host country? What the Taliban is seeking now, of course, is international legitimacy. Uh, to take over the country is one thing. Uh, to have that um, forceful takeover legitimated by the international community is, is something else, and that's what they're aiming for now. Uh, and we have to be clear about it. This was uh, the violent overthrow of a democratically elected government. Uh, you can have liked that government or not liked it, uh, but the principle must be respected. And that is why I think uh, the United States will be compelled to signal that um, uh, we will take strong action against any country that uh, uh, extends diplomatic recognition to the Taliban or that takes steps such as turning over an Afghan embassy uh, to the Taliban, that would be de facto recognition, uh, that those steps will be met by um, uh, a strong reaction, uh, reaction from the United States. Uh, so how do you see the relation, U.S. relation with the Taliban? Do you think that the U.S. has kind of leverage over Taliban still to convince them to respond to the international demands and perhaps to form an inclusive government? Well, I think the administration has been clear on that point. Uh, the Taliban is going to have to demonstrate uh, that they are a very different organization uh, with a very different agenda than the one they pursued in the 1990s, and quite frankly, the one they seem to be pursuing uh, so far uh, now. Uh, that uh, this Taliban uh, is not taking the actions that would lead to any confidence of its ability or its intention uh, to rule on behalf of all the Afghan people. So unless or until they take concrete steps, uh, you mentioned it, inclusion, that, that would be one step. The formation of a, of a, <clears throat> uh, a government that included women uh, and ethnic and religious minorities. So far, they are uh, uh, acting like the old Taliban, uh, which did none of these things and deserves no support and no recognition. So it really is up to them. Uh, should they take this series of steps? And it can't be just one single step. We need to see uh, a broad agenda of, of reform, of inclusion, of respect for human rights, of rule of law. Uh, and then see it demonstrated on the ground before uh, I think any country should move toward recognition. So do you think uh, the Taliban are a threat to the region and international community? And do you think that the U.S. and international community can really trust the Taliban? Because CINCOM leader, uh, I think two days ago at the Senate, already warned over ISK threats and increasing in Afghanistan. And it is too hard for the U.S. with the over the horizon 
mission to fight these threats. So how do you see this? Well, that's an excellent example. Uh, clearly, we are all worried about the uh, uh, emergence and apparent strengthening of uh, Islamic State Khorasan. Uh, what is the Taliban going to do about it? Uh, they're in control of the country now and its security forces. Are they going to take decisive action against uh, uh, these uh, Islamic State elements? So far, they've not shown a willingness or an ability to uh, to really take any steps in that regard. Also, sir, uh, Russia invasion in Ukraine somehow overshadows uh, the issues in Afghanistan and. Uh, they sometimes they compare them with the uh, Russian invasion in Ukraine, like uh, Soviet uh, invasion in Afghanistan, but Afghans fight back the Soviets. And right now, a lot of NATO and US is supporting uh, Ukraine against the Russia. How do you see this and how, what is your analysis on that? Uh, how it can really impact it? Can the world really forget about Afghanistan? Well, no one should forget about Afghanistan. Uh, no one is going to be able to forget about Afghanistan because uh, the movie did not come to an end when the Taliban moved into Kabul. It's going to play out reel after reel, uh, and it may be very unpleasant. I, I think there is a linkage to the Ukraine, quite frankly. Uh, I, I don't ever advocate single cause uh, interpretations for any major event. They're complicated. But I would, uh, I would imagine that for President Putin, he looked at what we did in Afghanistan. Uh, the, uh, I mean, it, it was, uh, none of us who saw those images are ever going to uh, uh, forget them of desperate Afghans clinging to US military aircraft only to fall, fall to their death and so forth. Uh, I am confident that President Putin looked at that and said, well, this country, the United States of America, it certainly isn't going to be able to stop me in the Ukraine. Uh, so I'm confident that was a factor in his thinking. There would be other factors as well, of course. Uh, what happened in Libya with the uh, Russian ally Muammar Gaddafi, uh, the Syrian conflict, and the way we declined to take any decisive or aggressive action against uh, their strikes on civilian targets, particularly in the north and Aleppo. All of these things were uh, factors in his decision making, but certainly Afghanistan was a factor that uh, uh, when you show weakness, inconsistency, lack of patience, lack of concern for uh, uh, an allied government, and a lack of concern for gross human rights violations, Violators like President Putin take encouragement mm -hmm. and step forward as he did with the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, many observers also believe the Taliban see Ukraine as a situation like an opportunity to implement their uh, hardline policies in Afghanistan. And, but also they also announced they're opening the schools next week or something. Uh, how do you see this and how Taliban should be really um, convinced or forced or pressured to uphold to international human rights and especially respecting women rights in the country? I think that is a very important point. I think it is up to the international community to demonstrate uh, to the Taliban that um, as we engage in Ukraine, we are not losing sight of what's happening in Afghanistan. And should they use this interval of a strong international focus on um, the Ukraine, uh, to pursue an agenda of uh, cruelty, oppression, discrimination, violence against its own citizens, uh, we take note uh, that if they ever want to get out from under the uh, international uh, criticism that they are rightly facing, uh, they cannot do it by moving in the dark when we're looking elsewhere. They can only do it by taking some of the steps we've already discussed to, to show that this is a very different government uh, in Kabul than it was in the 1990s and prepared to behave differently. So uh, they may be able to use this moment of uh, attention to the Ukraine to um, uh, move in the wrong direction, uh, but it will not take them where they want to go. The other thing I would say, Gila, and this is, I think, yes. important, which Taliban? Who is the Taliban now? This is not the 
uh, 95 Taliban anymore. There are different factions. Uh, the Doha faction, the Quetta Shura faction from Pakistan, um, <clears throat> the uh, younger generation, the, 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 the soldiers and the commanders who actually pursued the fight on the ground. These are different universes and we are starting to see friction. Uh, so rather than look at 1995 for an example, I personally look at the uh, Iranian revolution, 1979. Uh, we completely missed the power of the clerics. We were dealing with members of a civilian government in Iran uh, who themselves had no visibility on what was happening in um, uh, the <coughs> clerical establishment. So it's another reason for caution and um, uh, no quick sudden moves on the part of the international community. I am not at all sure that the government so-called that we see now is going to be the same six months from now. We could be looking at a period of uh, power struggle within the Taliban. In fact, I would consider that more likely uh, than the current government simply moving ahead without being challenged within its own ranks. So the last question said, how do you see the role of Pakistan in Afghanistan? They used to help uh, uh, Taliban to get to the power. When it comes to governing, it doesn't show that Taliban really, uh, Pakistan is really supporting the Taliban. At the same time, they blame them for the Pakistani Taliban's uh, fighting against the uh, Pakistani government. What is your thoughts about it? Well, how do you see the relationship of uh, Taliban with the Pakistan? And do they really listen at least to the Pakistan? Uh, that too is a very important question. As we saw, Pakistan supported the Taliban uh, in their move to power in the 1990s. They gave them sanctuary, of course, uh, in, their own, in, in the country of Pakistan, in the Northwest frontier in, in Balochistan. Um, uh, and um, now that those groups have come to power. What does it mean for Pakistan? Now you've touched on something important. Uh, uh, the Pakistani Taliban has been greatly encouraged by what happened in Afghanistan. They are stepping up their fight uh, inside Pakistan. They, they do not aim at regime change in Kabul. They aim at regime change in Islamabad. So the Pakistanis should be very, very concerned uh, that uh, what the Taliban did in Afghanistan is reverberating in their own country uh, with the Pakistani Taliban uh, and with the uh, Kashmiri jihadi groups as well. That uh, this uh, kind of emerging slogan from the Taliban that uh, they were clad only in the armor of the one true faith, but they vanquished the infidels. Well, that's giving encouragement across the spectrum, not least in Pakistan. Uh, so I would hope very much that the Pakistani government is seized of this issue, aware of the uh, grave threat to their own security, and prepared to work to, with the international community to, uh, uh, to lessen the risk and the threat uh, from um, indigenous groups only tangentially connected to the Taliban in Afghanistan. This, uh, this conflict is a very long way from being finished. However much the Biden administration might wish it and however much other regional governments might wish it, the fight goes on.